What is happening? Welcome to the Nick and Alex baseball show where we put the all in baseball. I'm Nick Pollock, joined by the nanny list Alex Fast. <laughs> Uh, it's child care is so unbelievably expensive. If there's anyone out there on the Twitch stream that can help be an affordable nanny, if you live in LA, we can probably pay you a very affordable rate. So help us out, please, or else we're going to go broke. Yeah, well, there you go. You know, Way to start with my trauma. Out, you know? <laughs> no, we, we put the all. That is also just all inclusive. We want everybody to enjoy this fantastic sport. We have a wonderful show for everyone today. I want to give a huge shout out to everybody watching on Twitch right now. I see you. Bames John in Magic Oriole, an enormous papaya. Thank you guys for watching tonight. If you're wondering, how do I do that? Well, it's on twitch.tv slash pitch. at 10 p.m. on Tuesday nights, every single Tuesday, Eastern time should be there. It's an experience to be had. And huge thanks to Eric Mira. You're in the background. We see you there. Thanks for producing this show. And if you're listening, you should also watch it on YouTube the next day, every single time, youtube.com slash pitch. But anyway, fast, we've got a great show. And where can people listen to this? You can check it out where you listen to all your podcasts, you diggus. You can check it out on <laughs> Apple Podcasts. I don't think we're on Spotify, but who cares? They rip off artists. Are we on Spotify? <laughs> yeah, we are. We're on Spotify. We're on Spotify. I love Spotify. <laughs> they pay artists all the money they're worth. Uh, <laughs> you should be rating and reviewing us. You should be giving us honest feedback so we can turn this show into the show that you want to hear. Again, mm. I'll, I'll probably say this every week. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't understand why people want to listen to people talk. But some people do like to listen to people talk to me. I like to sit in quiet rooms with nothing. But tell us what we can be doing to make this better. And we'll try and make it better and better each week. But boy, oh boy, do we have a great show for you as yes. Miles Michaelis is has no hit the Pirates through seven. So help me God if Miles really? Michaelis I mean, throws a no hitter. Oh, man. It doesn't wow. matter. It doesn't matter. You know, I think he's going to go one more inning because he is eight miles. Uh, by the way, this show is no longer on... This? <laughs> it's no longer on the fantasy feed. This is just the individual Nick and Alex baseball show. So if you haven't rated or review it, you just yet, you should do that. Huge thanks to Rissa 30 and DMB Martin for some fantastic five-star reviews. The best equally entertaining and informative inform informational and fun as well. So thank you so much for those reviews. And if you guys can do that, it will go a long way for us, but we also got to give away some PL plus we're getting this all out of the way early. Let's let's just do all this stuff. And we give away PL Plus to everybody that is watching Twitch. You have a chance to win it. We have a graphic of a pitcher. And if you can guess this pitcher at the end of the show, uh, we're going to ask who it is. For those listening, this pitcher has 81.2 innings pitch second in the majors right now. 3-4-2 ERA, but a .89 whip, which is eighth best mm. among starting pitchers. A 29% K rate and only a 3.2% walk rate. Who is that pitcher? I'm sure you have your guesses fast. You were really confident last week, but you didn't get yeah, that one. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I know who this is from getting ready for the the uh, the uh, the podcast yesterday. But I'll wait. We'll wait and see. Oh, we'll wait and see. interesting. We'll wait and see. Yeah. We absolutely will. And uh, but we're gonna go straight into this. Keep that in mind. We'll show the graphic again later. I uh, but we're gonna go into our thing of the week. And I like leading with this one because there's just something. That's just on our minds and fast for you. What is your thing this week? Well, there's two things. One, before we get into, well, there's actually three things that I think about. The first oh, thing is the, the, the username that we have in one of our reviews, which is DMB Martin, which is like, listen, I, I'm not going to get your opinion on this. I love you, but uh, Dave Matthews is underrated. And everyone wants to, like, it's like a fun, popular thing to, like, jump in and be like, oh, Dave Matthews, I was talking about their fans. Like, they're the worst, a bunch of frat bros. No, Dave Matthews, man, is a fantastic <laughs> band with incredible musicianship. Like, yeah, the bass playing isn't fantastic, but he knows his role in the band. The amount of melody that man is able to produce, I understand he dumped a bunch of poop on people. I get it. It wasn't his fault. He shouldn't be blamed for it. Dave Matthews is fantastic. The early albums are Chef's Kiss, and I really don't want to hear... I, I, don't drink the water. A little Alanis Morissette in the background. It's great stuff. Okay. That's not my real thing. My, uh, my real. Baseball. Wait, hold on. Hold on a second. I just love the instant assumption that I'm just going to hate on this take. And like, I love you, but let me talk about Dave Matthews band. Uh, Nick, you know, I still Ants marching is fantastic. It's a wonderful song. Okay. I'll get with that. I, I just, I honestly, there have been times the past couple of days where I stop and think about what you said about the eighties being the worst genre for music. And, and, and am I, I wrong? What is, yes. what is the worst? Wrong? I told what is you. the worst? I, oh, it's the aughts. Do you think still? I, I stick by it. It's the aughts. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not. I don't think you can say any year in which Thriller, any decade in which Thriller came out. Okay, I think is, the it, worst. is 80s the second one, second worst then for you? Maybe that's pretty it's close. The tens. Maybe it's the tens. No. There's so much good. You have In Rainbows and that's it. Um, all right, oh, my what? real thing of the week. It's my like my the real thing of the album week. From, the, from Radiohead, but that's fine. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> Did you the just Benz say is In the best Rainbows one. is the nah, nah, worst Pablo. album from Radiohead? I would say Pablo. No, Pablo Honey has to be. But I, I, I didn't jive with me. <laughs> oh, okay. The Benz and OK Computer and Kid A are just Chat. defiantly better. Chat, just defiantly. Chat. <laughs> it's not even Chat. Kurt. close. It's not even close. Chat, hell. It, it, yeah. Chat. It, it was really oh. disappointing to me that they fell into that, you know, as opposed to just this absolute pristine. <laughs> I uh, music that they put out with OK Computer, the Benz, and um, Kid A. But anyway, you know, apples and oranges. That that's. Uh, that's uh, I'm back to talk here. about Nolan Gorman and get this podcast back on track from the <laughs> awful takes we have had. Uh, and yeah, there have been takes. Nolan Gorman today did something uh, uh, that had me thinking. Why don't? Why is this the first time that we've seen this? Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure that this is the first time that we have seen this happen. Radiohead, I guess. Um, Can we roll the the clip of this? Can we? Okay, so here he is. It's bases loaded. Nolan Gorman's on first. Okay, there's two outs, which is incredibly important. Rather than sliding head first into second base, which would slow him down enough to record the out, he sprints past first base, beats the ball to the bag, and lets the runner from third score while giving the uh, runner who was who started on second, who is now currently on third, Edwin Sosa, the ability or the opportunity to score. So again, walking through it, bases loaded, two outs. Nolan Gorman sprints past second base, beats the ball to the bag, decides not to slide, and as a result, scores an additional run and gives an opportunity for an even another run to score. That is such incredible heads-up baseball. Like, seriously, that's that's next-level thinking coming from this rookie. It, it's it's unbelievable. It should be something that we see. It's I, like how many times do you get bases loaded with two outs to the ground ball right up to the second, and there's an opportunity to beat the, you know, beat the ball or beat the tag. But, like, Come on, that's amazing, right? Yeah, it's well, yes and no. So, I mean, just so th- there's any confusion here, because it's not a force play, because it's a tagged out, it means the runner that was initially on third, when they come in to score, it actually counts now. That's if there's any confusion about that, that's what happened here. It's such a close play second. I'm not convinced that Gorman is out if he slides. Um, and the, the amount of time window you need to say, like, if he slides, he's out, if he keeps sprinting, he's safe. It's such a rare occasion. I think that's why we haven't seen it before. No one would really even, it's not really even a consideration a lot of the time. Uh, and it's a risk reward. Maybe he's safe if he slides in and then it's bases loaded where uh, you still have another chance he's... for more. But I understand you got the run and that's a good thing. And I think any coach will say, yes, thank you so much for the run. Good job, Garmin. You did the right thing. It's a cool thing that happened. And uh, I don't, I, yeah, I mean, I'll take this. I think it's close enough that it's the right play to make. But uh, it's I a risk think the play. tag's pretty bang bang. I don't think he's going to be safe. I think if he slows down enough to slide, I think he's out by a pretty mm. considerable margin. Um, but I, 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 I have one more. I know it's bad. I, I couldn't find the best place to to. Fit I know. It I was actually thinking of this for the image of the week, but there isn't an image. I want to make my own. There isn't an image. That's I want to make my it, own version. Yeah, yeah. That's I why know. I called it the No Hawk, which kind yeah, of yeah, wonderful me job. Up. Yeah, yeah. That is <laughs> so. For those who don't know, those who might not be as plugged in. It, Joe Madden, in order to rouse the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, said, "Forget your Nickelback. I'm gonna, sh- <laughs> I'm gonna give myself a Mohawk." And he got fired that day. And it is sad. It is awesome that he decided. Can you imagine to do him it, but- in the office with a Mohawk. Be oh, like but- <laughs> what? <laughs> It's funny that you say that because it sounds like a a, a deleted scene from the British oh, office, or like oh, I was going to say save rest of development, but yeah, like anything, oh, God. like I that is so stone. bad for him. Just you thinking know? about him, like hanging up the phone, slouching back into his chair, and then looking in the mirror, and he's just got a bald head with a little mohawk. This like sixty year old man, just like sitting there, like like this with a beer in his hand, like oh my God. Great, just great. <laughs> it's looking like looking like a character from dinosaurs. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. Those, oh yeah. God, I mean that's right, amazing. I, I know, absolutely. Um, for me, I'm gonna let my 
on the corner self bleed in a bit because I'm a pitching guy and I got to say it's really cool this week to see all these young pitchers that are not the major hype ones. It's not like George Kirby coming up or something. This is Andre Pallante got a good chance. Almost got another one this week, but Jack Flaherty's back. And that's kind of cool. Uh, Matt Swarmer and Caleb Killian and Braxton Garrett and Alex Fiedo and Cutter Crawford, who guess what throws a cutter. And it's really amazing that he does. And then there, there's a second Zach Thompson. This one with a K even better. I mean, it, it's fun for me. If you don't know these guys like Andre Pallante, uh, Pallante throws a hard cut fastball. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Matt Swarmer, even though he let all those home runs to the Yankees, those are really good slider. Caleb Killian got some hype and has throws a hard, heavy sinker, which is really good. Braxton Garrett is really good at getting that sinker down for the Marlins. Alex Fayou has a six slider. And of course, Cutter Crawford has that cutter. And it's the fun for me where these are young pitchers getting their chances that we don't really know about but they could turn into something. Now this is the real fun part of the season for me. Uh, And yeah, it's making me hyped. It's making me excited. I want, I can't wait to see these guys blossom at the big league level. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun to be able to, you know, think about the guys that we're going to be talking about in two or three years. Like, I mean, sure. There's a chance that literally none of these guys pan out Right, talking about them at all, but there's also a chance that, you know, one of these guys is a tweak away from being the, the head of a staff, you know, like these are, these are the people that we're going to be spending our future talking about. It's cool. It's cool to be able to think back and be like, remember the first time we saw that weird Matt Swarmer leg kick? Like that's, Oh that's, yeah. That was your image of the week last week. No, so yeah, that's so funny to me. It cracks me up. But I love that stuff. That's what makes baseball fun, like the kind of originality of it, right? Absolutely. I mean, look, baseball is all about you have to throw this ball into this imaginary box, right? That's the only task you're given as a pitcher. Yeah, every single one not only has their different way of of uh, of getting ready to to prepare to throw it with their wind up, but they all throw differently at different angles with different movements and different speed and different repertoire. It's so human. It's so it's what you dream of is everyone has their own characteristics and we try and do comps, but it, there's never quite the perfect one. That's such a brilliant thing about the game. And yeah, now we got a new new uh, I don't know, group of guys that are just going to show what they can do. Who did you emulate as a kid? David Cohn. It was David Cohn. That's right. I, I, I tried to find video of it because I know it's somewhere in my parents house of me pushing down my leg and everything, dipping and diving. Like uh, or driving rather, I mm-hmm. uh, yeah I I mimicked David Cohen with my windup absolutely. What was your what, what was your 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 situation? Like I I think this might be an easy question. Wait, what's my situation? No, well, like, my when, you were, stomach, when you were like... <laughs> when you were at home and you were thinking about that big thing that you could do as a child, you're fantasizing about all the things you were going to do as a baseball player. What was the uh-huh. situation that you put yourself in? Oh, I w- I'm getting the ball game seven of the World Series and doing a complete game shutout. Oh, see, okay, good. See, this is why I'm glad I asked because I was one, I was worried. If, <laughs> I was worried if everyone <laughs> Nick Sitch. Uh, he's Eric like, Muir is hilarious. Eric Muir is good. Uh, I I was I was worried that everyone had the same situation, but I'm glad that you said that uh, because I felt like my situation was bottom of the seventh. You know, to save mm-hmm. the game. Sure. Not not, not bottom of the seventh. Bottom of the ninth. <laughs> game seven. <laughs> I've been watching college. Really- <laughs> No, oh, no, that's stuff, like no, high school. No, you know? I really dreamed about getting the vaunted hold <laughs> as a kid. Bottom of the seventh, <laughs> put me in, coach. <laughs> You're like, I no. don't want all the credit, but I want some. No, well, I was way too anxious for the ninth. I said, I can't do the ninth, can't even do the yeah. eighth, but the seventh. Oh, that's daddy's time yeah, to yeah, shine. Yeah. <laughs> did you? Did you actually have a wind up where you could possibly emulate? I don't think. Did you pitch as a kid? No. I did on on my oh, on the asphalt did? of my home. You've never talked about it. When I was a kid, I didn't fantasize about being a hitter. I fantasized about being Mike Mussina. Like I, yes! I fantasized kind of about oh, like I love Mike Mussina so much. He had such a crazy windup though. He did. That, I, yeah, the I, way he would go down all the way. It was and good. Then come back up. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like really. I didn't emulate it the way that you did with David Cohen. More, it was more like. I'm Mike Mussina. It's the bottom <laughs> of the ninth. Uh, you it's, know, like, it's a role play in the mind, right? Yeah, like it's like, it was oh, definitely I, that. Mike Mussina. Yeah, I feel you. And then that great thing where it's like you throw like 18 balls in a row and you're like, he fouled it off. He <laughs> fouled it off again. <laughs> you know, I remember my dad like having, you know, okay, just throw a strike or whatever. And he would say, we're not going to leave and go home until you like strike them out. Right. Oh. Essentially just throwing enough pitches in the zone that do it. And I remember him 
say, I don't know why this is what I emotionally remember. My amygdala was like, that's the thing you're going to remember from this is my yeah. dad like taking a high strike and be like, yeah, some some of us call that a strike. It's like, oh, my dad wants to go home. OK, oh. I get it. Well, you know, what's funny. it's actually funny you say that. You know what my dad said when we were doing this? What? Nothing, because he wasn't there. He said absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> it was just me alone outside, oh, <laughs> not fast. playing, not playing with my dad. <laughs> All right, are we got it. We got to move on fast. All right, we got. Let's move on. We have an image from of the week. What is what is your image of the week? Fast. Uh, it's much better than yours. This was fantastic. Uh, uh, it's unbelievable. Well, because but, you stole mine, but that's all right. All right, good. We both want to talk about it. It's Joe Musgrove and Chad Cool. It's images of the week. It's them playing tic-tac-toe on the mound. Honestly, I'm surprised. Never say that again. Never say images like that again, please. Images? (laughs) You don't do it again. Okay, sorry. I didn't know that's what it was. Them playing tic-tac-toe on the mound, I thought was such an incredible, like, playful like fantastic thing to do in a game that like took something that was like hella serious, which was like a picture you think about Max Scherzer and the, you know, the, the broken nose and the different colored eyes. And then now you've got two dudes just playing tic-tac-toe on the mound. Like, I, I don't know. I love it. I think this should be a part of every single baseball game. You should always have pitchers playing tic-tac-toe. Like I just thought it was such a funny lighthearted thing to do. Joe Musgrove was like in a mood no, it wasn't even just that. Just that whole atmosphere. There was like another thing where Manny Machado and Jose Iglesias like had like a funny rundown during that series. Like there mm. was some like weird bromances going on during that entire series. I just thought it was so fun to watch. Like it's just contagious to see that stuff. Uh, it's a great way to make, you know, you a know, game that can slog a little bit more entertaining. Is this like the second straight podcast where we're talking about tic-tac-toe? Why did we talk you about know? tic-tac-toe last time? I thought, I thought, I thought we brought it up because it's like it's a game that's just like... We, we got to do better. We got to like throw through. We got to, I, I want to see this, but I want to see them like throw the rosin bag to where they want to put it in because it's a solved game. You shouldn't lose a tic-tac-toe. I love the, I love the spirit of this. Let's like have a little fun game. But as you can see with the images, they tied, you know, and yeah. you should, if you're a major leaguer, you should have the, the smarts to tie a tic-tac-toe, but they had to throw the rosin bag and that's where they had to put their X or their O. You know, but yeah, this kind of fun is always encouraged by me. I thought it was great. I, th- I think it's I- I'm a little disappointed that neither one lost. <laughs> I think you're overly estimating the intellect of a lot of these players. I think that we'd have a lot of losers if if this. Game oh, happened. no. Oh, man. Well, is it just like the team gets a run or they have to get kicked out of the game when they lose a tic tac go like, oh, sorry. You're at 43 pitches, but now you can't you can't go to the fourth inning now. You just lost pickle wizard. Ninety nine had that idea. Oh, sorry, well, Eric, what's up? Go ahead. No, he's yeah. he's good. I uh, so oh, I would I say no. Yeah, he, he says stuff to us fast. That's not for them. You can hear uh, those voices. <laughs> oh no! Uh, oh the guy image of the week fast. <laughs> um, which I know I did this before. I love pitcher reactions. I think pitcher reactions are just they they create these things, and that's the large image. But I want to zoom in on on just Matt Swarmer here, and Matt Swarmer <laughs> is. <laughs> Not playing tic-tac-toe. No, look at this. He's doing a full oh, lunge. Yeah. And it's an it's like his knees on the ground. Just like you can't do that in those like, jeans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can I can do it. I can do a lunge. I used to do lunges all the time. You know, and it's such a uh it, it's such a pure moment, I think. Whenever a pitcher knows he just allowed a, a 119.8 mile per hour exit oh. velocity home run from John Clark Stanton. And it's like, look at his face. I mean, I wish you could even zoom in on just the face here. It is an absolute gem of a, uh, astonishment. Not my face, Eric. <laughs> his face. No, no, <laughs> no, no, his face. We anyway, do Matt's have warm. fun. It's like, if you need one image to represent what it's like getting destroyed by John Carlos Stanton, it is that. So yeah, sorry, Matt Swarmer. It wasn't your day. There it is. He looks Look like a character from Paperboy. Like, he looks like... <laughs> like an NES, like, pixelated. Yes. Like, Ooh! he really does. Yeah, he looks like the dude who's, like, on his back, like, kicking his legs up in the air, who, like, haunts my dreams for some reason. I'm trying oh, to think yeah, of, like, of if I... Absolutely. I don't, like... This kind of sucks because you can't figure out what your version would be because it's such an in the moment thing. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Like there's yeah, yeah. something so uh, like I, 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 I'm trying to think what I do in unprecedented times. I usually just make a bunch of weird sounds. 
Um, but like, I don't, I don't <laughs> know what I would do. <laughs> yeah. You go, ah, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I what, was going, what, 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 <laughs> well, I've, okay. I've done things where like, oh my God, going back to tic-tac-toe and how fast is no. it replaced by it, which is so great. <laughs> Um, but I, uh, the, you know, I, I've done things where I, I throw a pitch right down the middle and I literally scream before it gets to the glove. Cause I'm just like, you are going to crush this. And this is terrible. Uh, I good. have also done the, I don't look at explosions thing where I just, I don't even look at it. I, I go, yep, that's, that's gone. And I don't you need can... to, I need to stare at that. Yeah. You could do that. Huh? You could just theoretically scream after your pitch. Yeah, I, well, I mean, Robbie Ray does it every pitch, so that's whatever. a grunt. I want like a. <laughs> ah! I, I threw go. Ah! <laughs> yeah, no, that's but what like, it is. Like, that's like, I literally have done it because I'm just like that's my own anxiety being released because I know how bad that pitch is. Tic Tac Joe is very good. Eric's really crushing his game today, considering he's <laughs> in, like literally doing this from an Econo Lodge in the middle of Seattle. <laughs> like he's doing, a, he's doing a great job with this today. Oh my god, it, it, uh, it, is, it is great. What's what's next on the docket, Fast? What do we got? We're gonna move this podcast along. Well, we're actually gonna go ahead and take a, a, a quick break, aren't we, Nick? Oh, we, hey, quick break time. Here we go. Quick break. And by the way you're listening to this have you taken a look at our merch we actually have some amazing shirts we have a new sandy crush for sandy alcantara we have gal and gals as you can see now we have mcclana fan for shane mcclana fans we have ty lord mcgill live every day like it's nola day tati yaga for the ace that is always going to ace clayton kershaw a whole array of stuff so go to shop.pitchless.com get yours today i'm wearing the toby shirt in the style of air jordan and toby from the office Check them out. Shop.pitchless.com. Get your amazing shirt today. Let me just take this podcast real quick and go and just veer it off to the side. Yes. It is a, it is, it is the top of the ninth inning. Yep. Miles Michaelis has not given up a hit. He has given up an unearned run. He's got six, uh, six strikeouts and one walk. Um, It is a, he started the ninth inning. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. It is a nine to one route. Okay. He has thrown 117 pitches now because he just threw yep. one in the ninth. Are mm-hmm. you leaving Miles Michaelis in? Yeah. Yeah. You just kind of have yeah. to. This is he got the moment. out with this the is, second. This pitch. is Miles Michaelis left the majors and came back. This would be his second. You know, you, you let him do this. You give him this. This would be his second no hitter. Just you let him do this, man. Let him do it. Let, let him have this this story. It's incredible. He's a look. Yeah, I mean, you got to set some limit, right? But uh, I think David Cohen put it best. Like, if you're not taking him out in the eighth, you're leaving him in for the ninth. Yeah, that's true. He's, uh, you can tell, he just threw three. Yeah, man, he's gassed. He just threw yeah. three 75 mile an hour curveballs. He hasn't thrown anything else but a curveball so far in the ninth inning. He's, he's, ga- I don't know, man. 119 pitches, another 76 mile an hour curveball. Uh, if he walks a dude, I'm taking him out. 119 pitches now. I under, it's a nine to one game. You already have the no hitter. I win a world series. I, w- I would tell him to just don't be 100%. Just don't be 100%. Like take this easy, you know, and yeah. maybe you'll, you'll, you don't need to be your 100% self right now. You can try it at 80%. You can't tell you got to tell a pitcher that they're going to be like, all right, whatever. 120 pitches, 83 mile an hour changeup was 120th pitch. This has to be the most pitches thrown. In a start from a starter in many moons. Yeah, I think Sandy Alcantara flirted with that. But yeah. Okay. Um, there was also a what was the crazy one? It was like Hunter Green was up there, and that was insane. Oh, 108, 113 or something during his bid, which was yeah. insane. Uh, but yeah, I hope he makes it. I hope he does it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I Miles Michaelis also is one of those guys, like he's not a young in. This was a guy yeah. who has really struggled last year. There's no guarantee that if you pull him after seven or whatever at 100 pitches, wherever he's at, that he's going to be not only healthy through the year, but then also the same caliber pitcher, you know, later in the season, right? This isn't this isn't you preserving uh, Max Scherzer or yeah, your young true. Shane Boz or something. This is Miles Michaelis, who's been down this road a little bit before. He's had elevated pitch counts before. Let him have this. 
All right. We'll keep you up to date. Uh, I'm sure by the time you're listening to this, yeah. unless you're watching live on Twitch, the people we love the most, um, you're, 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 you're going to know what happened here. Uh, he's one out away. He's one out away. Hmm. Um, all right. We're going to move on to the inside pitch here. Um, this is something that we uh, used to a little bit do used to do a little bit on the on uh, yeah. the border podcast. We loved. We did it like a lot early on. Uh, right. That'll be really fun to bring back. Uh, I'll, I'll give it on over to Nick. Nick, what are you going to talk to us about today for the inside pitch? Something that we need to get a little more in depth about. Sure. I think we undervalue uh, the importance of mound visits. Uh, we see this as this um, cherished resource now that they added the the whole five mound, mound visits a game back, like I said, like 2019 or something. And it, I think it's made it so that teams rarely, very rarely utilize all five of them. At the very least, they'll use four so that they want to save that one they can. And the importance of a bound visit is huge. Um, the pitcher is on an island. It is so lonely out there. You often have a good catcher who, by the way, I got to say, Jose Trevino tonight with, the, with, against, with Garrett Cole did the coolest thing fast. What are you doing? And I... Uh, this is something really quickly, too, about being on that island. Trevino caught a curveball in the outside corner that was a little bit off the plate. But he did. He would, he caught it, quickly received it, pointed back at Cole. And I swear to you, I know that Jose Trevino said, a boy, Cole. Mm. And that's probably what made the umpire call that as a strike. And it's little things like that that can, it's not just framing how you receive it, but how you react to that pitch right after. I bet got that call. But it's the same idea of, like, you need Trevino to give you that support in the moment. And there are so many times I see a guy four pitch walk and then, walk, you know, ball in the next pitch and they wait another batter to go off and meet with them. And it's like, do not do not, any moment that you think this could be a mound visit, take advantage of it. Use that resource. Uh, and I don't see it enough. Uh, so whenever I see a mound visit, I often like clap because like, yes, this is the good time of doing it. And I think it can absolutely change things just like a well time. Uh, well, you know, well time time out in basketball can mm -hmm. change a game. It's the same thing, and it's just not done enough. And I'm just talking about a catcher, but like, hey, you're good. We got this. Reset, and you're fine. Um, and I think it's, yeah, I think it's underused. Yeah, I mean, I think the 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 conversations that we've had with pitchers has been very, oh, no. He oh, lost my God. They took him out. What? Oh. No, he gave it up with two outs in a 2-2 two -two count. No. Oh my God. No. He's literally one strike away. Oh. He threw a 76 mile an hour curveball on the outside edge to Cal Mitchell. Uh, <laughs> of course, Cal hitting, Mitchell. That was my first guess. I think he was hitting 200 before this hit. Uh, he took a he had a ground rule double. Oh, that's brutal. As we call it. We call it in the PL Plus Discord. The banana has been split. Oh, um, it's our man. way of not saying no hitter and that's very it very sad it stinks it yeah. stinks uh no what i was saying before it was we got a we got a really good indication about different pitchers um relationships with the mound visit right there are certain pitchers that we talked to where they talked about the funniest mound visit that they had and then what was it oh yeah colors or something who was like I do not like talk it. to me yeah, yeah don't man, talk that's the colors was like do not no mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, it is funny because it's it really is like we don't see many physical representations. Or maybe I'm wrong. Do we see many physical representations of when the mental game actually matters? You know what I mean? It's a physical mm -hmm. representation of the mental game actually mattering because it's clearly a pitching coach being like, I need to go talk to this dude right now or right. a catcher yeah. being like, I need to go talk to this dude right now. He's, you know, I mean, sure. Sometimes it's like the signs are messed up, but like there's something really interesting about what this review about a pitcher you know what i mean i can't imagine because i never pitched being in the throes of competition and having someone try and come talk to me like i, I don't oh, know it's, how oh I, I always wanted it i always i always it, yes i'm all about like camaraderie and team support and everything and i i i'm i'm the, my biggest enemy right in those moments i'm the one that understands that i'm not perfect and i'm upset about it so having someone says like acknowledging it and giving you support saying, no, man, you're doing great. Like you got this, put this here, do that. We, we can do this together, you know, is everything that you want, you know, in that moment. I mean, at least that's how it is for me. There are certain guys I can imagine. Yeah. Like Lance or others are just saying, no, 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 no. I don't, I need to be focused about this. I don't want to hear your patronizing remarks or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's player by player, but I, I think there are, especially a lot of times with young guys, 
where the mound visit is not utilized enough and i can see it unraveling and no one's talking to them because you got to preserve that mound visit and it's just ah it drives me crazy yeah, I mean, it's a good point, too, because remember, pitchers don't always know what's best for them, right? They're very right. confident just, in their ways. Yeah, just give them and, a thing of advice. Hey, Boz, you're opening up a little bit too quickly uh, with your front shoulder when you're in the stretch. Like, make sure you stay straight. If, he had, or, if someone had told him that in that uh, third inning, it would have been great, you know? Or whatever it takes for him to come to that realization by himself. Hey, Boz, what'd you have for breakfast? Sure. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. What's the last movie you it's, watched? I, I will say, I mean, I, as a coach and um, I also like learning this from catchers and everything, just as a catcher or coach, telling the pitcher something for them to focus on is all you need to do. You don't need to be right, but you just need to get them back into their muscle memory and not in whatever is in their head at the moment. Just say, hey, make sure you get out when you release, you know, or get this the glove probably... out or pull it in. That kind of stuff goes a long way. This is probably why you'd be a better catcher or pitching coach than me, because I think I would go out and ask like inane, ask Reddit questions yeah. just to try and get them out of there. The uh, the best mound visit I had was uh, a kid. Uh, he's 12 years old um, and his best friend's playing second base. This is a kid who never walked anybody. And yeah, he just walked the guy in four pitches and gets two and out on someone. So I'd use a mound visit. I go, Isaac, what's going on, man? He goes, ah, you know, I'm just not concentrating. I'm like, what? You're not you're not concentrating. It's like, yeah, you know, just because I'm not concentrating. Well, concentrate, Isaac. Jeremy, tell Isaac to concentrate. Isaac, concentrate. Okay, Jeremy. All right. All right. And he goes and strikes out the guy in the next three pitches. That's you know? amazing. And, and it's like, that's sometimes the stuff that it is. You just said, what's going on? And you're done. I mean, that's not really me saying you're doing this wrong. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, it could be something as right. Just get their mind off of it. Hey, what'd you have for breakfast yeah. this morning? That kind of thing. I love that stuff, too. It really just depends on the player. All right. Yeah, it definitely uh, learning your player. That's a big part of it. But that also just goes to how important a pitching coach is. It's more than numbers and stats. It's also getting nah. to know these guys and how you can get through to them. Alex, um, think fast has arrived. He's here, baby. Uh, <laughs> all right. Before we, our, our next segment, one of my personal favorites. We do mm. not know what this question is going to be. Do but now know. is the time when our producer, <laughs> it's Eric, baby. It's take a, we're gonna, it's take, Eric we're going to relax. And Eric, what, what question do you have for us? All right, guys. So, like I told you, I've been in Seattle all weekend, and I went to a mm. Mariners game. And it got me thinking, there's a nice bullpen bar area in center field. So, I want to know what your guys' favorite standing room areas in a baseball stadium are. Oh, Very man. nice. I, wow. Nick's I okay. been to three stadiums. <laughs> I have been to four, thank you. Uh, I, I would say that, I mean, of the four I've been to, I... I don't know Fenway. You can't really say Fenway on the Green Monster. Is that standing area? If it is, I, I mean, I saw that and that was amazing. No, that was incredible. You get a seat there. Yeah, you can stand up, kind of. But all right, I then it probably would be City Field by the uh, by the bridge and everything. That's pretty cool. Okay, all right, here we go. Yeah, what do you got? You've been to so many more than I have. I know. I'm ashamed by this, everybody. You should be angry at me. I'm angry at myself. No, 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 no. It's okay. I'm angry um, at myself. Camden Yard sitting uh, uh, like standing over the wall is really nice. It's a fun mm. view. You can kind of like take in the park from the opposite way that it's kind of intended. Just I, I dig that um, left field in San Diego where they have like the grass. I, uh, I've always seen that and envious of it. I think that looks great. Left field in San Diego. I wasn't going to say San Diego, but left field in San Diego is, is pretty cool. And you have a nice view of the bullpens. There is a bar area inside of the Dodgers where you can literally be on the same plane as the bullpens and like get a beer huh. and just sit yeah, in front right, of the right. glass and watch people warm up. Yeah. Like um, they're sharks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like an aquarium. <laughs> yeah. The, the Marlins have one. I, I think it might be like a little, it's like this weird bar nightclub listen I, I i actually really dig the marlins i've always kind of enjoyed them as a franchise that stadium's a mess man it's just <laughs> like a, it, th it thinks it's a nightclub it really does it's so loud um but they have a little bar area in left field that is uh you can it almost feels like you're in right you're field. on you're yeah right right you're it's on field level that you go under yeah. yeah oh yeah, left field i've seen me. that yeah, yeah. um yeah. So is I it like that one, I don't know. I see people in the like behind the fence. I'm like, this is so strange. That's yeah, that's left field. You're yeah, it yeah. you feel there. You feel you you really feel like you're up to it. Um, but yeah, I think I think those are my those are my top ones. I'm trying to think of the other ones that I've been to. I mean, I got <laughs> I got nothing here, guys. I, I, I really need to do it more. It's just I mean, I'm supposed to go to I think I'm supposed to go to Philly at some point this year and I do that. Um, at least fun. You know, I wasn't invited to somebody's bachelor party, so I didn't get oh to go God. to PNC Park. 
I wasn't PSE. So was, like, wasn't it? Didn't you go to Great PSE American Ballpark? That? Oh, it was the Joey Votto. Like the Joey Votto thing. Yeah. By the way, the guy, that was what I knew fast for like a month, just so you guys know. <laughs> yeah. I'm not actually upset about that. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope to see more soon. I mean, I'll, I'm sure I'll be going off to LA at some point. I got to catch both the Dodgers and the Angels when I'm there. I'll see you in like three weeks, dog. Oh my God. I keep forgetting about this. I'm so yeah. excited. You're coming yeah. back to New York. Uh, wait, you guys are hanging out. Coming back to me. New York? No, no. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah. are. Sorry, Eric. You can fly in from that Econo Lodge. We will. <laughs> we'd love to hang out with you, Eric. That's, we'll right. see what we That's a do. great question. I really dig that question. I, I uh, also one last thing. If you yeah. can, I don't. I think Co America, Co America, Co America, Co America, Co America. <laughs> Canada. I think, it, I think it gets dunked on. That's. I think that that stadium. I actually think is a top ten stadium. Did you I meet really... like the best usher when you were there? I met a, a fantastic usher, but I actually think it takes some of the things that uh, Camden Yards, the one fault it has is it's a closed concourse and Comerica is Camden Yards with an open concourse. Mm. And I think that makes it even, it, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It, it's really nice. Uh, and the Thanks. fans actually are really amazing. They like know that what is on the field is not what they want, but they're, it's great. But um, all right. That's great. All right. Yeah. Let's go on to uh, my favorite section. Uh, of this show that is wild thoughts and fast you're gonna go here and i i'm a little bit i almost you should be ashamed this week stop you should be ashamed because it's not your thought it isn't your thought but it's not your thought it's a really interesting thought listen if you want a thought fine uh, we can do exactly what oh no because that's pickles thought about tic-tac-toe determining you know whoever wins tic-tac-toe gets a run or something um it's from a, a, a user on Reddit, Trick uh -huh. Dog seven seven five, okay. and I really love this. Umpires can argue back, but if they do, they cannot eject anyone. Like I love that. What do you mean they can argue back? So they could be like, you know, like an umpire like can be very much like, no, you're wrong, but they stay pretty neutral, right? Uh -huh. Like I want like a hockey gloves off both of them in their face screaming at one another like because you know that's what they're but thinking. that happens you know. that happens all the time and they still eject them that does not happen all the time where oh, umpires yeah. blow their their cool no -uh. no I've i think i'm a, a lot i feel like yelling maybe, back at each other you know i feel like a majority of the time maybe yeah, if the guy when it happens there and stuff yeah fair enough. yeah he just stands there and usually what happens is he stands there and walks away and another umpire gets into it yeah the crew tree right? or whatever it is yeah the crew tree, uh, yeah, the crew tree comes in. Don't do it uh, fast. <laughs> <laughs> he comes in, uh, but I would kind of like it if they were like, "Fine, you want to go? Like, you want to do this right now?" And then we just got to see them have it out, but with no repercussions. Like they're both heated. I get it. I'm sure mm -hmm. he's getting sick and tired of being yelled at without any any ability to kind of reciprocate the way he wants to reciprocate. Let him reciprocate. Let him get into it. And if they fight, all the better. Well, I've got something that's truly wild fast. Oh, great. All Did right. you read it? Did you read it? No, I like to be surprised. Good. I think fast that hitters should, there should be a game a year where this happens or maybe in an inning or something. But I just want the situation where a hitter or the whole team decides to wear green man suits. So pitchers don't know who they are pitching against. The stance would give it away. No, they that's well, that's first of all, that'd be really cool if they had to then study the stance. So they, I mean, sure, they know who it's John Carlos Stanton. Yeah. Okay. They know it's him. Fine. <laughs> but I, I love the idea of like I'm a switch hitter, but I'm gonna go righty on righty now, and you don't know who I am. <laughs> because then I really want to see like how is the pitcher going to attack this guy without feeling like I can't do this or I can't do that from someone, you know? I love. I love the idea of the Astros doing it and Jose Altuve doing it. And the pitcher like, I wonder who this five foot six guy is. Who could this, be? Who could this tiny man be? Oh, man. I mean, it would probably be like really obvious, I guess, with the entire lineup. But I just like this nondescript, like question mark on the back, you know, who could this be? And then like they're, they're, they're wiggling the bat and you're squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> Uh, that is as Saris one thirty in chat said the exact same thing as me. Poor yeah. Altuve, because that cracks me up. Because, you, but you're right. Like overall, there are guys who are not going to be that distinct. Right. Um, it is it is kind of interesting. Yeah, I do think it would be kind of fun. 
I think they would get. I'd be curious because I mean, they're be, they, yeah. all the statistics are by the wayside. They can't be like, okay, this guy swings at sliders down the way a lot. You know, you just kind right. of attack them with the stuff that you have. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, I feel like everyone should just be John Dowd, right? The, uh, the mystery guy from uh, MVP baseball that was very mm-hmm. bonds, but like, they're all just the placeholder player. Was and that I think his that's name, John fun. Dowd? Yeah, that was the uh, uh, that was the guy. I think it was Dowd, if I got it right. Who like, oh, Barry Bonds wasn't al- didn't allow himself to be represented inside of MVP, MVP baseball. But I uh, no, anyway, just... anyway, that, I think that's just a fun thing. And you can also do it in reverse. Like you don't know who the pitcher is on the mound. You're just like, oh man, well that's a 95 mile per hour four seamer. Hmm, like who could this be from the Yankees today? Mm. I think that's just really funny. Yeah, that is good. That is good. Um, all right, we're going to move on to uh, the pitch of the week. Uh, these are two pitches that we, you know, ha- have have seen that we really wanted to be able to highlight. Uh, I, what are you going first? Am I going first on this one? Are you going to go first? Fast? It's all you, okay. buddy. Who do you got? Who is your? Oh, my God. No way. Really? What? You're going to talk about this guy. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, I mean, so Michael Fulmer was ah! a guy that for, for many, many moons, we were all very, very excited about. Uh-huh. We, we thought like, uh, you know, the, the sinker was really good. We thought, you know, he's he'd got a good breaking pitch. Like, is he going to be able to put it together? He's got the fantastic, what was the fantastic rookie year, right? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we I, I thought he was from there going to excel into something more. And it wasn't just you. It was you. It was Eno. It was a lot of big guys who really thought because the stuff was there. Then he kind of gets sidetracked by, uh, you know, a lot of injuries. And yeah. we don't like here he is. He's kind of blossomed into a a very good reliever. He's almost like Jorge Lopez in terms of he was a guy who had a lot of shine to him as a as a as a as a uh, starting pitcher, but even more so. Right. And I think we all kind of forgot about him, especially because he pitches for for the Tigers. But here he is with this slider that we can see here that we knew was really good and it's just been dominating as a reliever. I mean, it has the uh, third best WOBA in baseball across all pitch types. It has a 106 WOBA right now. Wow. Wow. That's unbelievable, dude. Like this is, uh, it's kind of crazy because he hasn't been closing because Soto has been getting the closing job right now. But Fulmer's just been really lights out with that pitch. It literally goes Ryan Helsley's four seamer, Corbin Burns's curveball, and then Michael Fulmer slider. Wow, it's the third best pitch in baseball. It's, wait, wait. it's literally right ahead of Shane McClanahan's changeup. Did you say did you say Corbin Burns's curveball? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he, he's only thrown 234, but it's one of two pitches in baseball with a sub 100 woba. Yeah, it's got a 96. Man, so. So that's a good call. I think I, I dig it. I dig the uh, the exposure to him. If you don't know me, Michael Fulmer, actually Austin Bristow the second. Mm-hmm. I and I had a thing when he was uh, entering the site. I think in 2017 about how he believed Michael Fulmer was worse than Rick Porcello. And every year we had this bet that Fulmer or Porcello. I mean, obviously it's done now because Porcello's retired for the yeah. most part, I believe. And I uh, but there was one year when Fulmer was so bad. Oh, and when Fulmer was out with Tommy John, but Purcell was so bad, I still think I won the bet because of how he wasn't detrimental <laughs> to your team than Rick Purcell. So Fulmer to me is always gonna have a special place in my heart. And it was pretty cool that you chose him today. Good. What about yours? Uh, uh, so I wanted to highlight, I think this is a, an important thing of pitch of the week. It's not necessarily about what's necessarily good, it's just something that is interesting to me. And that's Robbie Ray's sinker. And the reason why this matters is that it didn't exist a week ago. Mm-hmm. It was just four seamer slider, maybe some curveballs, maybe a very rare changeup or something. But it was just four seamer and slider from Robbie Ray. Then all of a sudden, two starts ago, he then throws more sinkers than four seamers, around 30% sinkers and 25% slide, uh, four seamers or something like that, which is weird because. Robbie Ray is all about elevated four seamers, getting a ton of whiffs. And this is a, a shift toward, hey, I'm going to try and limit the contact I allow and, and re- reduce home runs. And then the last start was 50% sinker usage, which is insane. And what does he do? He has a seven-inning game with zero earned runs, mm. which is arguably the best start that he's had the entire season. And I think that's incredibly interesting that a guy that has a four-seamer 
with a 13% swing strike rate and is just kind of what made him an AL Cy Young winner is just, nope, never mind. It's June and I'm already tweaking and changing this to become a whole different pitcher now. It's something I'm going to be looking at uh, a ton across the next few weeks to see is a race still going after this sinker and B, is it working? Is it actually getting results for the major league level? It doesn't matter what whiffs you get and how many strikeouts you get. How many earned runs are you allowing? And even yeah. though Robbie Bray only had seven whiffs in his last start, which is massively lower than how it has been through the entire season. I mean, this is someone with the seventh best swing strike rate induced in the majors among all starting pitchers to only allow seven is so low, but he got results. So we'll see how that pans out. And it's all on the back of the sinker. Yeah. I'll be curious to see, like we talked a little bit yesterday about how like he's perpetually a dude who just has like one bad inning. And I wonder yeah. if this is like a new out pitch for him as you know, we see this ground out that he's able to induce as a result of this sinker. Um, like, I wonder if this is like a nice new ground out pitch for him to kind of mitigate those, those awful innings that he's had. I, I wonder, but I mean, that's not even how he's using it, I guess, right? It's not just like once again, but then how do you know what inning it is? Yeah. But it's this is the predominant fastball now. It's just, it's strange to me. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, Nick, it's time yeah. to unloosen our belts, take our pants off, and let it loose. <laughs> okay. This is, uh, this is a topic that we just kind of want to get into complain about something that kind of popped into my head a little bit i was looking at some look at the old standings a couple days ago and i realized that if the playoffs were to start today four teams from the al east would be yeah in the playoffs is it one of them the orioles it's not <laughs> it's not <laughs> and let's say it was let's say adley rutschman didn't come up and underperform severely what they Kyle Stowers was great and Bradish was fantastic. But he adly at hello. <laughs> Boo. Um, <laughs> I, I want like I understand divisional rivalries. I get it. Do we need them anymore? No. Can we go back to the to, to the kind of the, the basketball style thing or just yeah. the top eight teams make it? Because that's really what you want to see, right? I'm, and I'm guess sure what? And that's what I want. The top eight. So wait, wait, do you want four from each side then, or do you want eight in each one? What do you mean? Like you have two conferences then. Yeah. Right. Of 16 teams or 15. Yes. Do you want eight from each or do you want four from each? Oh, I want eight from each. Right. You want half of them, right? Mm -hmm. So you want 16 team playoffs. Um, I could be, I could argue to get it down to the top seven. Might be fine with me. But yeah, but okay. Okay. I'm, I'm so in on this. This is essentially the whole idea I had about if you are above 500 or so you make it to the playoffs it's the same idea at heart i've just been like half of the teams to make the playoffs i uh, oh i'm so in on this fast i'm so in yeah I just, lose. Think, I, I just think well i just think that it's like you really want to be able to see at the end of the year the most competitive teams and i understand that there's a notion of like yeah but if you're third place in the division and you're out of that third wild card you don't deserve it you should be fighting to get into that third wild card but there are obviously instances in which we've seen teams who are like two games above 500 claw to the top of that division or whatever it is mm -hmm. and be able to do that this year there it seems like I, this is off the top of my head but it seems like there's less parity among the divisions than like i i remember in recent history there are already divisions yeah. where you're just like this is over like i don't the nl east kind of presents it th as that even with the braves i mean even with the braves winning what probably 13 in a row i think it is now it's only, they're only when, five games back and do not <laughs> Do not underestimate the ability of the Mets to collapse fast. Yeah, because you're right. And last week it was nine games back. So you're right. That's already happening. Um, but there is, I guess there has been more parity recently. Houston pretty much is going to run away with that division already. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe Cleveland's able to catch up to Minnesota. The Yankees just seem like they're not looking back. They're not. I mean, it's nine right now. now, but you don't know just because of the firepower of that AL East. Yeah. The central probably going to come down to St. Louis and, and Milwaukee, yep. right? That, that's, yep. that's pretty much over. And the NL West, the, that's the dream, isn't it? Yeah, that's the dream. That, that's definitely the dream. I mean, you have the Dodgers, the Padres, and San Francisco. Padres and the Dodgers currently tied. San Francisco three games back. Yeah, uh, maybe the Mets. <laughs> I mean, maybe Philly uh, can, can turn it on. It's still incredibly early. But, like, mm. do, should we even be having this conversation if we can just get rid of this and make it the top eight teams from each division? 
like it, it, you still accomplish what you want, right? You get the cream of the crop. I, I'm, I'm with you completely. Uh, I mean, I was even tempted to make my wild thought a whole thing about um, how about we reward the division that has the most parity inside of it. Mm -hmm. That is the the division that is closest in winning percentage between each other inside the division gets the higher seed. Oh, yeah. Or gets like home field advantage throughout. That's kind of interesting. Right. Yeah, kinda, just I like the that. total wins of the division or whatever you want to say, just saying like defining this division as the best division and saying like, yeah, because, okay, this team has 100 wins, but this one had three teams at 95. That's a tougher division. You had to play more games against that. Yeah. You know, some version of strength of schedule inside of a division. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think there's a lot of really interesting thought to be had about um, division stuff. I'm going to let it loose about because, I mean, honestly, this happened after last week's show, and I think it would be just wrong for us not to mention it. Tony La Russa intentionally walking Trey Turner with a one and two count is the most unbelievable thing to me. It's it's it blows my mind. It, I, I understand that he had a man of first pass ball or wild pitch, get to second. Now you have an open base. No, it's a one and two count. If you want, throw sliders out of the zone. If you want to not unintentionally, intentionally walk him. But you had two strikes, Tony. I mean, that's, oh my gosh. I, I, I just, uh, uh, hmm. I think I was more offended by his, his out, outrage. At the people, people were upset. Yeah. Him being like, I don't get it. <laughs> like what? Like, what do you mean? You don't get it. There is not a statistic out there. And Tom Tango, bless his heart, took that very seriously and dug mm. very deep. And was like, no, I don't think there's a statistic out there that says on a one-two count you yeah. should ever, ever Insane. do that. It, it, it just, it didn't, I, honestly, if I was the White Sox owner and I was looking for any excuse to fire Tony La Russa, this is it. There it was. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, it just seems like that team obviously riddled with, 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 with um, injuries, but like not performing the way that they should be performing right now. What are they? They're currently third in their division, right? Yeah. They're two games under 500. Like I would have just been like, especially you have the out, you have Girardi and Madden getting fired. You know what I sure. mean? Yeah. Like, honestly, it was, I don't know, man. It like someone sent it to me and I was like, all right, let me give him the benefit of the doubt for a second. And then I saw I, the video and I was like, no, nah, this ain't Yeah, it. no, yeah, that's not it. I, I mean, I think you had the excuse once you realized that he had a DUI, but you know, that's, that's just me. Um, <laughs> that's to but, not uh, hire him to begin with. <laughs> uh, what do we got next fast? We're running out oh, of time. Gosh. Yeah, you're right. We're running out of time. I believe next up we have my favorite segment of all ah. of them, uh, which is I would like to know. It's your turn, Nick. Yep, who turn. is going to win the World Series? The four teams now that you are not able to say are yep. the Marlins, which was your choice, mm. the Orioles, which was mine, the yep. Brewers, which is your choice, the Mets, yep. which was mine. Mm. Who's going to win the World Series this year? Well, I think it's pretty clear. You actually already mentioned the team. They're only three and a half games back in the AL Central. That's the Cleveland Guardians. They have Tristan McKenzie, Shane Bieber, Cal Quantrill holding down the fort right now. We're just holding the fort. Cal Quantrill, nine straight games of at least six innings pitching. Just one of those above three earned runs is insane. Shane Bieber has a slider back, and it's amazing. Even though he's at 90, 91 mile per hour fastballs, it doesn't matter. His slider is so good. Tristan McKenzie is developing incredibly well for that rotation. And hey, Savali could return. He was throwing more cutters and curveballs. Very encouraging there in his progression. Plesak is closer to where he used to be with his slider looking great these days. He was throwing a lot of change of strikes. It could be something there as well. And did you know that they are the fourth, fourth best reliever ERA in baseball this season? Sixth and fifth. And yes, they are an average hitting team around 100 WRC+. plus, But they make it to that playoff series with a good pitching staff they have jose ramirez who exists who has a 349 iso right now and a 186 wrc plus they could add someone at the deadline make that a little bit more of a padded offense as they are going to be fighting for that al central crown andres jimenez already holds a 2.1 war for the year owen miller and miles straw and stephen kwan have all stepped up as well they're at 29 27 right now the twins. I mean, what's going to happen with that rotation? What what's their health going to look like? There is a lot of opportunity here, and you get the Guardians into the playoffs. They could steal a few series and run away with it. Yeah, maybe Fran Mill comes back and finds his old power. It goes on one of those, you know. Oh, hey, it's my power. Uh, yeah, I, I I just it just sucks that they're not a team more interested in 
in acquiring the people that they mm. would need to do it. Right. It's the sure. same old story every year. I mean, I know this is always like a tongue in cheek segment and I, that's why I kind of dig about it. But like, when you think about it, it's like, yeah, you're right. Like give them two bats and they could probably make it two bats and maybe one more. Two SP. bats. Ah, ah, ah. Oh my God. Okay. Anyway, uh, we're going to move on <laughs> to the final segment of the night before we get to the mystery pitcher and we award the winner of the, uh, the mm. free PL plus Nick. Take us home for this penultimate segment. Yeah, this is the uh, the baseball nostalgia. Uh, did you ever collect baseball cards fast? No. Next. And uh, I did, and they're pretty cool. You really never did it, ever? No, it just wasn't something that I was interested really? in. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I collected pins. I had a lot of pins. Every, went to Cam- Every time I went to Camden Yards, I got a new pin for my hat, and then I like had neck problems because my hat had like a thousand pins on it. I was like, I love baseball, but uh, no, I so you, I, you were I, a pin man, okay? I was a pin man, I was a pin, pin man. man, I was like Hellraiser, just full of pins, <laughs> yeah, pinhead, okay. I uh, fine, I did. I actually was supporting my camera with it before my inserts that I had just to get some extra <laughs> leverage above my monitor. <laughs> So you're, I, they're really getting to good use, right? Yeah, they are. They're really helping out my career. I think the most valuable one, I looked up all of them, is a Jimmy Rollins rookie. Mm. Um, and I thought at the time, like, I had all these, like, $50 inserts and everything. I'm like, no, it's not at all. I never had anything, like, truly special. I think one of them was a 1 out of 35, but it was a Jeff Bagwell, like, the worst common. You know, like, a yeah, it, it was, like, a, a worst version of the normal Bagwell um it was it's annoying as heck uh but all right fast so we have Wait, only a few on. minutes left yes i want one card there's only one card that i want and what is I that fast be. cindy ponson no the billy ripkin card oh of course you do you, you want the the face on it okay yeah i want that all one. right yeah all right um so i'm gonna ask chat right now as i set up the whole situation so you guys can put in the name uh, if you know who the player was at the beginning of the show uh, that you believe was the uh, the pitcher put in their last name in the chat, now now's the time to do it. You'll be eligible to win a free month of PL Plus. I'm going to roll it. But fast, who do you think it was? I think it, I think it was I think it's actually a cheat that you shouldn't be able to use him. I think it was <laughs> the man who went against your favorite man who used to be your favorite man, and yeah. that's yeah, you could say it. Aaron Nola. Yeah, correct. Fast. It was Aaron Nola. I think I wanted to highlight the fact that he has a 0.89 whip after. That's unreal. Right? You didn't know that, did you? No, that's the thing that stuck out because I looked at him yesterday. Yeah, 81 innings so far, too, is amazing. He just had two straight good starts. Um, But yeah, so Twitch, if you're watching now, now's the time you put Nola into chat. You'll be eligible to win PL Plus. Yeah, we got someone getting it right. Enormous Papaya. Uh, we'll see if anyone else, I'll give him a, a little bit more time to do it. Now, you know what? In our supply, you got it. It's all you. Congratulations. You deserve it for yeah, watching bah, 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 bah. <laughs> the, the Nick and Alex baseball show live on Twitch, 10 p.m. Eastern time, every single Tuesday night, Eastern. And last segment, Fast, what are you hyped about for this week? Uh, I, there's a really exciting Yankees Blue Jays series. And I think both teams are kind of, um, hitting their stride a little bit. Yankees, obviously a juggernaut right now, Toronto going to be coming off. I mean, uh, yeah, Toronto going to be coming off, a what should be an easy series against the Orioles, even though they won tonight, but yeah, I'm kind of into it. Unbelievable. Did you see what I wrote? You wrote the Yankees and Rays. So like, okay, we're just all watching the Yanks this week. I mean, yeah, the Ray Shane McClanahan against Luis Severino is going to be so much fun. I'm sad it wasn't Cole versus McClanahan, but still, that is such an amazing matchup. I, I I think, you know, we were just talking about the East, like what's going to go on. The Rays are third at the moment, but honestly, I I see the 9-11 games. Who knows? There's so much. These are such great teams that anyone, if they go on a 15 winning game winning streak, all of a sudden it's like a five game thing. It's just like, oh, okay. yeah. yeah, you know, it, it can be absolutely crazy. So I'm excited for that. It's, it there's a lot of great pitching out there right now, and these are oh, these are such fun matchups. It's gonna be a great time. But I think that's gonna do it. Fast. Uh, I I want to thank everybody for watching live on Twitch for listening, of course, on our podcast feed that's just only on Apple and Spotify now, not on the Pitchers Fantasy Baseball one anymore. So thank you for leaving any rating and review those go a long way for us thanks eric mira for being our wonderful producer but my name is nick pollock i'm alex fast and we'll talk to you guys next week see ya